Um, here's uh, Helen's temporary marker. It says Helen Giles, 1914 to 2003. Love one another as I have loved you. And uh, Well, at least it's something, huh? It's better. I brought um this book. It's the Ed Family History. And it's got a lot of stories, so... I'm going to uh, finish off here by reading Grandma some stories from uh, the Ed family history and um, say my prayers and say goodbye. Shows Helen Evelyn Dahlberg, which I put Helen Giles here, so I'm thinking I might make you one more. As um, born in 1914, and uh, we have oh, you were born on December 18th, 1914. And we have Frank Lyndon Giles, John Charles Dahlberg, Martin Mandred Finley. Um, and uh, Gileen Giles and Jack Giles. And then we have Martin Mandred Giles in this picture, Judy Ann Giles, and Helen Delbert. Oh, that's a nice family picture. I don't know where Carolyn is. Um, oh, here's Carolyn, Helen Cizerny, and Jim Brandon, and Soraya Lynn, Nahina, and John Nahini and Alois um, Carolyn Stepman. And uh, it says Helen lives in Huntsville, Alabama. Most of her work has been of an accounting nature. We lack a complete photo display of her children. Photos shown here were supplied by her sister, sister Ethel. Carolyn is a graduate of California Polytechnical University as a teacher, and her husband Jim is a graduate student of University of San Diego and is a software design engineer. Her daughter Soria is an RN in the operating room in Kodiak, Alaska, and her son John is a graduate of Laverne University and a branch manager of a Wells Fargo bank. Um, we have a profile for Lyndon. Lyndon was the second eldest of Sophia's children, born on July 9, 1912. He had a very encouraging high school teacher who suggested he pursue a writing career. He had won a writing contest at Riverton High School. Following his graduation, he traveled to New York to spend some time with his aunt, Stina. While there, he found that his aunt disapproved of her shortened name and believed that she should be called Christina. The big city life must not have captured him because he later returned to the Kent farm. He then began writing. His main focus was on religious history. None of his work was ever published. He had written several scripts to this effect. His sister Ethel believes 
that his views should be published and shared with others. During the Second World War, he had served in the transportation portion of the Army. After the war, he worked for Northern Pacific Railroad. Lyndon decided to look after his mother in, his, in her later years. He continued to do so until his death in 1975. Two months later, Sophia died too. He had not married. Um, that's interesting. We should find out where that work is. Paul was the eldest of Sophia and Carl's children. And Carl's children had lived in Alaska for a number of years. He and his wife Esther cared for four foster children. He had worked as an electrician in several Alaska communities. Dee, one of his adopted daughters, is an RN. Um, it's funny, I'm married to an electrician. How weird, huh, Grandma? Um, she currently is driving a garbage truck in Anchorage as the pay is much better. Paul currently lives in a town north of Port North Spokane and very close to the Canadian border. Esther and Paul raised two other daughters that were reclaimed by their parents and are now living in Chicago. That's kind of a weird story. And you know, Paul died, we think, um, suspiciously. Um, we have a... Paul was the eldest of Sophia and Carl's children. He was born July 2nd, 1910. He spent his youth in Bremerton and Kent. He and a partner had started an electrical business wiring homes. They called it Sparks Electric. The warriors found him in the Navy. His first marriage was to a young Southern girl. It was during the Depression years, and they decided to part, so Paul, being resourceful, found a way to see her back home. They rode the rails. <laughs> oh, he sought and found a second mate, Esther, whom he convinced to travel to Alaska. They built a home at Anchor Point. Most of Paul's work entailed electrical projects and construction. He was away from home a lot. His mate, Esther, too, was from the South on the lower mainland. They adopted four Eluk children. Two were from one family, Franklin and Dee. Allie and Marie were from the second family. Allie and Marie were reclaimed by their parents. They are now living in Chicago. close to the Canadian border of Washington. Sophia joined the family on May 3rd, 1883. She and her father had an argument which probably helped this teenager at 16 to see what the new world had to offer her. She had both a sister and brother living in Leadville, Colorado. She had lived with her sister for a short time and decided to go on to Tacoma, Washington, where she worked both as a housekeeper and a cook. Sophia returned to Leadville in 1902 to assist Anne Louisa, who had been having trouble during the pregnancy and died in childbirth. Sophia then returned to Tacoma and continued working on her job. Photographers were asking Sophia to pose for them. Perhaps she could have followed a modeling career. Since money was accumulating, she decided to invest in some real estate in Bremerton. In the process, she met Carl Dahlberg, who had lived in Akron, Ohio, and had been widowed. His name had been Anderson, but he decided there were too many and changed his name. He worked as a driller in the shipyard. He proposed, and they were married in 1908. In the early years of their marriage, they lived in Bremerton. In 1914, they bought a farm in Kent. They lived there a short time. They decided to move back to Bremerton. Carl again worked as a driller. He had worked on and off at this job for 15 years. He had become interested in a Mormon church while in Akron. Sophia had decided to help raise money to establish a Mormon church. She did this by raising chickens, using the proceeds from their sales to purchase property upon which to build the church. It is called the Reorganized Church of the 
Latter-day Saints, not a Utah Mormon church. During the time he was unemployed by the shipyard, they had built three different homes. In the 1930s, they moved back to their Kent farm. Carl died in 1946. Lyndon and Sophia in 1975. 